I'm going to go through what I think is happening, you know, today and, uh, you know, all the weeks leading up to this and um, what the events are. And also, we will see that these events in many ways are historical. They, they never really happened before. And how do we understand them? Uh, so to talk about the event and the, what seems to be the reasoning behind them and what seems to be coming up in the future. So um, there are, let me put it this way. There are, when we take a look at Egypt, Mitzrayim, we can discern uh, basically eight phases of the process. If you want to use Egypt, Mitzrayim as a model, we can see that there are eight different phases that happens uh, in terms of a geula, the redemption itself. One, you have what's called the memtes, Shari Toma trigger. That means, obviously, what started the whole thing in Mitzrayim was the fact that the Jews had descended into the Memtes Shari Toma, the 49 levels of defilement. And that was a trigger to begin the process. Because we know, had they slipped into the Nun, had they slipped into the 50th level, right, then they would not be redeemable. We know that. That's Chazal tell us. So therefore, what the Rav did, even though they had not done the Tikkun, which we know, because they were supposed to be there 400 years, instead 190 years was still to go. They were only there 210 years. So therefore, there's 190 years worth of no Tikkun. So obviously, you can't bring a Mashiach since the Tikkun was never completed. You see. So therefore, there was what's called a Memtes Shari Toma trigger. The fact that the Jews had descended into the 49th level of Toma is what triggered the whole Messianic initiation. That's what we see from the Mitzrayim. Now, using that as a model, you can continue. So what happened? The next stage or process or a phase is the Ben Shloim activated the Mashiach. And we know, of course, that was Moshe Rabbeinu. Then, of course, it says, Vayeda Elohim, and God knew. He knew what? <clears throat> that the Jews had to be rescued. They had to be redeemed. Or else it wasn't going to happen, you see. Now, therefore, what the Ben Shloim did, of course, is he communicated to Moshe Rabbeinu at the Sneh, at the burning bush, that he was going to initiate the whole messianic process. And Moshe Rabbeinu would be the Mashiach. He would be the one to take them out, out of exile, and he would be the one to give them the Torah, right? And at that point in time, he was also the one who would bring them to Eretz Yisrael, you know, as part of a messianic process. Remember, this was all before the 40 years wandering, you know, the sin of the golden calf. So at that point in time, really, you're supposed to have a complete messianic uh, phase. You see? So Moshe Rabbeinu would have taken them out of Egypt. Then he would have given them the Torah. And that Torah would not be the form that we have. That Torah would be the form of the Orishan, the concealed, the Orhagonas, the messianic light. That's what it would be. And as a result of that, they would then all go to Eretz Israel, which, by the way, is not that far. You know, maybe it's a couple of days' travel. Even then, you know, uh, it certainly doesn't take 40 years. And they would have gone to um, uh, Eretz Israel, but they would have been in a situation called Odom Horishim before the Chet, which is a whole different type of reality than we understand. We have no idea what Odom Horishim was before the sin, it wasn't the same humans that we are. So he, Moshe Rabbeinu would have accompanied Klai Yisrael into the Eretz Yisrael, and Moshe Rabbeinu would have been the Mashiach ben Yosef. You see? So that's really what should have happened. You see? But what, so like I say, what triggered it was the Memtesh Shai Tumah. 
and like I mentioned in the Shia which I had given, is that that is the concept of Kulum Chayovim. You see, <clears throat> that everybody, that Ein Ben David Bo, Mashiach Ben David does not come, unless everybody is Zakai, righteous, or Chayov, or guilty of sin. You see, and that's what Chazal mean. And I had mentioned, you know, that if somebody, everybody is guilty of sin, right, then that means it's Mem Shari Tumah, because that's exactly what it means. You see? Uh, so lo and behold, this is what was happening in Mitzrayim. Okay, now, after, as I mentioned, this is what Moshe Rabbeinu would have become, uh, Mashiach ben Yosef, then there would have been a Mashiach ben David, and that would have inaugurated the Messianic time. However, uh, getting back to Mitzrayim, what happened is you had the Memtes Shari Tumah, the trigger, which I mentioned. Uh, that was phase one. The second phase was that the Bosham had to initiate the messianic process, and that was the snare, the burning bush of Moshe Rabbeinu. But then, lo and behold, he had to reverse the process. You see, Moshe Rabbeinu comes to Mitzrayim, and he stands in front of Paroi, and says, you have, to take the, you have to let the Jews go, and so on. What happens is Paroi, instead of saying, you know, fine, prove it, or whatever, he defies Moshe, and he defies God. So not only does he not let the Jews out, the slaves out, he intensifies their slavery, which is a direct defiance of the request of Moshe Abinu. So that is stage three, or phase three, and that is a reversal of the entire process. So not only do the Jews not go out, but the Klippa, the evil, actually doubles down and becomes much worse. So that is a reversal of the entire messianic process. Then what happens is after the Jews, right, after the Jews suffer tremendously, right, and I think the suffering ended on Rosh Hashanah, you see, uh, so then it, what, what begins is the, the rehab. And the rehabilitation, basically, of the Jewish people is two things. One is the Ten Makas, and that is the destruction of Egypt. So that is the Ibud, or the destruction of the Klippa, which, of course, at that point in time, as I mentioned last week, is the Bechor, of the Sultan. And therefore, that, that occurs after the reversal, where the Egypt begins to become destroyed, you see. Now, besides that, there's something else that has to happen, you see. And that's part of the rehabilitation phase. Not only is the Klippa destroyed, Egypt destroyed, but the Jews have to be lifted from the Memtes Shari Tumah. Because you cannot go to Har Sinai, right, receive that type of terror, which is the Messianic light, without changing, you see, or without being cured, so to speak. So therefore, there was a rehabilitation going on. What was that? Where, until then, they were over with Zora. But the, the display that the Rabbani Shalom did was so overpowering. I mean, could you imagine the, the, the mockers, what they were? I mean, when you think about them, it's beyond belief. Imagine, you know, if you see the sight of blood. The, everybody knows what blood is. Everybody has seen blood. Right? But could you imagine the Nile River? All of it is blood. Now, it's not what like people want to say, that the Nile turned colored red. No. It was blood. We're not looking here at a color, red color. It was mamish blood. I mean, the, blue cro- the Red Cross would have had a field day in terms of donations. So could you imagine the Nile River, which is thousands of miles long, I think the Nile is 3,500 miles long. Now, I'm not saying all of it, but certainly the amount of the Nile that was in Egypt, because the Nile goes into Sudan, it goes into Ethiopia, and it goes into Uganda, Lake Victoria. I think that's the, that's the source of the Nile. But certainly the Nile in Egypt, all of it was mummish dumb. 
Can you imagine a river being blood instead of water? I mean, that is an, that, that's not just a nest. That is a nest that has never been seen and probably will never be seen until the Mashiach comes, which is an absolute overthrow of nature. And that's what they saw. So therefore, what they all did, obviously, is they abandoned the Avodah Zorah. And that is the beginning of the rehabilitation. So therefore, what we begin to understand is that the Makkah served two points, two purposes. The first purpose of the Makkah, right, is to destroy Egypt or to severely remove its ability to be a Bechor of the Sultan, you see. The, the second purpose of the Makkah is to display to the Jewish people the open power of God and therefore to make them maminim, you see. And that is rehabilitation, where you elevate the Jewish people tremendously in Ruchnius. So we can say that this is stage four, okay? F- stage phase one is Memtes trigger. Phase two is the initiation by having Moshe Rabbeinu become a Shiach. Stage three is the reversal of the whole messianic process, which we know you need. That's the Indian of Tachetz Benoi, because they have to be brought up to speed to have done the Tikkun. And phase four is the destruction of Egypt, which is the Klippa, right? And the rehabilitation of Klai Israel with the, using the same instruments that God used to destroy Egypt. Then you have what's called phase five, which is the release of Mashiach ben Yosef from his klipa, you see. And that began when Moshe Rabbeinu stood at the snare, you see. And really that began, his release began when he appeared at Mount Sinai, Har Sinai. Because he came down and he had this Koran or Ponov. He had this tremendous beam of light, which we don't know what that is, that came from him, and it was so uh, it was so great that he had to have a mask to hide himself. And what you're looking at is the Yechido released. Yechido is released from its klipa, which is I mentioned the whole concept of the Yisurin of Mashiach ben Yosef, and that is released, and that produces. Mashiach was Moshe Rabbeinu to have this incredible awe that he has. And then, of course, what he does is he begins that redemption. Now, what that would have meant, you know, in other words, he begins to take on the nations of the world because obviously they're going to react to this. And that's where you see in the Posuk that Kani Re'em Kanov that the horns of the Re'em, which is the Mashiach ben Yosef, the weapons, he will gore the nations with those weapons, which is unbelievable Chochmah. And like I had mentioned, that Chochmah is the O Mashiach, is the Messianic light. Then, after that phase, which is number six, the phase of Mashiach ben David entry, you now have Mashiach ben David who enters. Now, it's not clear who would have been Mashiach ben David, Mashabeinu would have been Mashiach ben Yosef. But who is Mashiach ben David is not really clear. And once he comes, then he will, of course, finish off the job that he ends the Shlita, the dominion of the nations of the world, you know, and so on. And he will usher in phase eight, which is the Messianic era itself. There you are. Eight phases of the Messianic process. Okay. So that's a very important uh, schedule, so to speak, of what we can look forward to. Now, what's interesting now, which is what I want to do, right, is to go through what I believe is two times. That this occurred twice. Once, the first one was called the Holocaust. And the second one is the, the uh, initiation of Trump. And I want to go through that and show you, you see. Now, the Holocaust was not an normal event, even though the Jews have been persecuted many times. 
But I believe that during the Holocaust, the entire world was in a situation also, basically, of mem teshai toma. You see, a tremendous amount of evil. And we would see that. First of all, we could see that in the whole Europe. You see, and Europe was terrible, you know, not only Germany and the uh, East European nations, Ukraine and Poland and so on, you know. But the way they blocked the Jewish people from going to Eretz Israel, the British, with the uh, white paper and so on, and then you had Roosevelt in America, tremendously evil, how they all knew that the Jews were dying, you see. So that's a tremendous climate of evil. But besides that, the Jews were disappearing at the time of the Holocaust because the, the reform movement and the Haskalah, which is the Enlightenment movement, okay, that was making tremendous inroads among the Jewish people. And Jews were abandoning left and right the mitzvahs, you see, and they were assimilating in the Goyim. Now, we don't know how extensive that was, but that was very, very extensive. So there you have it. When you have that type of memtes shari tumor, when you have the world tremendously evil, you see, and also the Jews disappearing because of assimilation and so on, then that's a memtes shari tumor situation. So I believe what that did is it triggered a messianic initiation. Now in Egypt, what that initiation was, was Moshe Rabbeinu being selected at the snap. But I believe the initiation during the Holocaust, you know, was one of them, which I will say, is Eretz Yisrael. <clears throat> For the first time in 2,000 years, Eretz Yisrael went to the Jews. Now, Eretz Yisrael coming back to the Jews is a major, major advance in the process. Because the Jews now have Eretz Yisrael, which is incredible. Now, there could have been other events which are messianic, okay, without getting into that. But these things, certainly Eretz Yisrael qualifies as a messianic uh, advancement. And that's what happened, you see. Then, of course, there was a reversal. What is the reversal? Well, the reversal is that the ones who take over Eretz Yisrael, right, are the Maskilim, the secular Zionists. And what they did is they took on Eretz Yisrael and they destroyed the religious fabric, the Ruchnius of Eretz Yisrael, you see. And that is a complete reversal of a messianic process, you see. Uh, so there was the reversal. Instead of the Jews being rehabilitated, it was reversed, you see. Now, as far as I see, there's no real rehabilitation. The reversal was, on the contrary, when not only the Zionists, secular Zionists, took over Israel and they destroyed the spiritual, the, the spiritual uh, climate of Eretz Israel, but that's when the Reformed movement, conservative rehabilitation really took on uh, its growth in America. And that destroyed America, if you think about it. Why does America look the way it does now? You see? So in Eretz Israel, the reason why it does is because of the Maskilim, the Haskalah movement, which is a secular Zionist, how they destroyed Israel and the Ruchnis of Israel. You know, if, if you ever read accounts of that, you can immediately see that the whole, the whole government, the whole intent of that government was to destroy the ruchnias of people coming to Eretz Yisrael. Now, in America, you had the same thing. What did you have? You had the reform movement, which really seized America, the conservatives, right? And then your reconstructionists. And they destroyed America. That's really what did it. So after they got finished, you see, and, and uh, well, and also what's important is that what, it's not only they that destroyed the ability of the Jews to be rehabilitated, but the tremendous advance in, in uh, technology, science and technology, provided a tremendous distraction, you see, 
toward the Jewish people. You know, and that really took a great deal of spirituality away from the Jews, slowly. Uh, therefore, this we are looking at uh, the tremendous reversal of what happened in the Holocaust, you see. So, obviously, we're not talking here about a rehabilitation. So, really, when you think about it, there's just basically three phases, you know. And without a rehabilitation, you know, there's no Mashiach ben Yosef that's released. Although it would be interesting to know, was he around at that time? Maybe, you know. But he certainly was not released, you know. And they had Eretz Israel, but that didn't constitute a rehabilitation. Instead, the Jews fell into, right, they fell into uh, intermarriage. Terrible, right? And it began to grow. They fell into assimilation, and that began to grow, you see. And there's also non-affiliation, where Jews just left the fold, and they have nothing to do with Judaism, you see. And it got worse and worse and worse. Until the second phase of the Memtes trigger. And that phase is basically now. And we've seen it. The climate of the world in many ways is worse than it was then. Why? Because at least then you had a lot of evil being done, right? You had a, a lot of denial of Ruchnius, especially by the era of Rav, which I will talk about. And the era of Rav was busy destroying the Jews in Eretz Israel. And the era of Rav, that's the Maskilim, secular Zionist, and the era of Rav in America was destroying American Jewry, you see. And, of course, you had that also in Europe and so on. So, therefore, <clears throat> uh, all this destruction was happening. But the problem is that now it's worse. Why? Besides the fact that all of this has accumulated, right, and has destroyed the Jewish people, 80%, as I had mentioned, of the Jewish people are gone. They're gone. You know, uh, many times, you know, I, I speak around the world. Many times I would go to a city, you know, wherever, you know, in America, whatever, and I would ask the people who invited me to speak, yeah, how, many, how many Orthodox families are there in this city? And whatever they told me, it was always a staggering statistic, you know, they would tell me, well, there are 80,000 Jews in this uh, state. Maybe you're lucky if there's 2,000 families that are Orthodox. And this repeated itself over and over again, you see. And this is 20 years ago or 30 years ago, whatever, you see. Today it's much worse. Today the estimate is that 7 out of 10 Jews intermarry, you see, which is much worse because now... Not only are they not religious, but many of them have fell into the religion of the spouse. How many Hanukkah bushes are there besides the Christmas tree and so on? It's astounding. So the Jews clearly are Memteshar Tumor. But there's something worse that's happened. Is that the world has changed. In what way? The world has embraced ideas which are destructive of civilization. And I refer specifically, not only to the fact that they are not interested in Ruchnias, but also to the incredible amount of sexual perversions that are out there. I mean, today it's unbelievable. You see, you know, and uh, just what you see, I mean, you know, there's a guy who's now, according to Biden, um, we know who it is, He's now the minister, the secretary of transportation. This guy's married to a man. So could you imagine as a government official at the level of a secretary, which is a very high cabinet position, this guy's going to be invited for different uh, governmental functions. And he's going to come with his husband, two men, you see. And everybody's going to look at this, right? And they'll say, okay, who cares? Therefore, what is going to happen, it's going to become universally accepted at the level of a government, not at the level of practice of the people. 
And that is an ibud of civilization. And we know that. Because, like I mentioned once, there's a chazal that says that the reason why the mabul came and what sealed the decree was when a man would marry a man, and the Medrash says, when a man would marry a behemoth, apparently that also happened, right? And therefore they would write a ksuba, which is a legal document, right, that legalizes the marriage. And therefore the marble was sealed. The decree was sealed in heaven. Why? Because, you know, it's one thing you're able to have a Zara, and that's been going on for thousands of years, right? Or, not only that, but you do sins, you do whatever you want. Okay, that's one thing. But that doesn't destroy civilization, right? That's merely a defiance and rebellion against spirituality. But this is different. Sexual perversion, you see, or sexual corruption will destroy civilization. And God will not tolerate that. Because it's not just the destruction of Ruchnia's spirituality. It is a destruction of civilization. And America has now entered that. You see, so the Mem Teshari Tuma is no longer on the Madrego, the level of a denial and defiance of spirituality and, and an incorporation of pleasure, you see, and power and corruption and all that. But what it is, is, a dis- is, is entertaining or getting involved in behaviors which can destroy a civilization. That's, all, that, that's what's called a qualitative leap. That is mem teshari toma in the worst possible ways. Because even in Egypt, the mem teshari toma was only in terms of Avodah Zara, you see. But the Jews did not involve themselves in the sexual perversions that the Egyptians did, you see. But today, you know, forget about it. There, it's all over the United States. And many people tell me that, uh, you know, today uh, it, it's what's called hip, or whatever they call it, to be a homosexual. They are actually considered to be a, a esteemed part of society. Well, that's it. It's over with, you see. And therefore, the corruption, that perversion, has descended into the memtes but at a different level of the Memtes, you see. Very important idea. Therefore, that will invite a mobble. Because when the government legalizes it, then it becomes official, legal, legitimate. And it becomes a preferred, perhaps, certainly uh, a, an a, 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 uh, acceptable lifestyle. And then it's over with, you see. Because then people are going to gravitate toward this in droves, you see. Whereas before they would have been stopped. But now Adraba, on the contrary, you know, on the contrary, you, you are esteemed by society. And not only that, but you, they, cannot, uh, they, they cannot even discriminate against you. And that's illegal, you see. So they cannot even prevent you from engaging in this incredible perversion. You see, and all and people have to hire you. They have to do things for you. You see, we are looking at the beginning of the end of the breakdown of society. And the problem is, is that it's one thing if it happened in some faraway country, but it's happening in America. And in America, America is a model for the entire world, because basically everybody tries to copy America. You see. And therefore, they're going to look at America as a model, right? And they are going to say, well, if they can do it, of course, we can do it also. So what's going to happen is that this is now going to spread rapidly throughout the planet, you see, where it's going to become more and more in your face, you know? Imagine you own a building, you want to rent out an apartment. Some guy comes, right? And he says, well, he wants to rent it out. You rent it out, and you find out that this guy is married to a man, or maybe a woman to a woman, however it works, you know, you see. And eventually what's going to happen is the marriage will be permitted not just to, uh, you know, a human, 
yeah, why not? Why can't three people be married together, right? Why can't a, marry, a man marry his pet? All of this is the logical end of the incredible uh, pandemic, I should say, of sexual perversion. So we are now looking at Mem Teshari Tuma, which is much worse. Like I said, because it's not merely a defiance or a denial of Ruchnius. It is now a denial or defiance of societal norms which allow a civilization to, to uh, flourish. Therefore, God has now began the same thing. Same phases, you see. So therefore, the Rabban Hashem is going to initiate a messianic phase. And the messianic phase that he initiated right, is not to assign the Mashiach, not yet, but I believe that Trump, Donald Trump, is the initiation of a messianic phase, because Esau will only do tshuva at the end of time to assist Yaakov, you see, and therefore he is really part of that, you know, now don't get me wrong, Donald Trump is not a messiah, obviously, but he's part of a process of Esau doing tshuva. And not only him, but we also see that he has assisted Israel, not only in giving back this stuff to Israel, which is incredible, and we know that is, right? Even Yishmael, the Arabs, which I said a long time ago, is also part of the process of tshuva. You see, you now have Arab nations, Muslim nations, that want to join with Israel. And in the end of time, those two nations, the Arabs, the Muslims, Yishmoel, and Edoim, Esav, the Toshib Esav, both of them will rejoin the Jewish people to help them, help them do the Tikkun. And we're mamish watching that. You see? People don't understand what this means. It, what it really is, is that the Bersham, like I mentioned, has initiated the Mem Teshari Tumor, the Messianic phases, because it's worse than Egypt, you see. Uh, so therefore, we now understand the basic uh, concept of Trump, is that he is the initiation, right, which is phase two of the Messianic process, you see. But what is interesting to that, and we see it, you know, what he's done is incredible. I mean, you can say the guy loves Jews, you know. Uh, he allowed, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem, we know. He recognizes Jerusalem as the capital. He recognizes the Golan Heights. He removes the stigma of that the Jews violated international law by Yehud and Shomron. Uh, you see, not only that, he gets rid of the PLO, he confronts the Arabs with, against the animosity to Israel. And then ultimately, right, he enables the Arabs to join with Israel. I mean, this is one of the greatest political victories ever known. He should get not one, but several Nobel Peace Prizes because of what he did. What he pulled off is unheard of. This hasn't happened in 150 years that the Arabs are actually making peace and having full diplomatic relations with Israel. You see. But we know what is happening. We know you need phase three. Right? What is phase three? Phase three is the reversal. Why? Because the Mem Teshai Tuma doesn't complete the Tikkun. You see. It necessitates that the Bershom breaks the Gula because the Jews are failing and they're disappearing. But what about the Tikkun? So therefore, the Rebbe reverses the process. That's called, if I, which I mentioned, I'm sure you're aware of it, the concept of Tachas Benoi, by the Akedah. That even though uh, Avraham Avinu removed Yitzchak, because obviously the Rebbe didn't want to kill Yitzchak, right? But even though he removed them, you can't just remove them and that's it. No. You need a substitute, Tachas Benoi. And that's why he needed the ram. Without that ram, 
he could not take Yitzchak off that altar. You see? It wasn't just a choice, you know, a good idea. You needed somebody to replace Yitzchak of Vino in order to complete what has to be done at the end of time. And since the end of time, the Mashiach is going to come, right? And he's going to come because of Memtesh Sha'atoma, which is Kulum Chayob, where everybody's guilty. That's what the Gemara says. Therefore, you need a substitute. Somebody has to finish off the process, and the finishing off the process is a radical change in the entire, to the entire Jewish people and to the entire world. So this is the concept of the reversal that we are seeing. Now, this is basically half this year, and I'm going to complete it next week. Next week we'll know what the story is in terms of Biden, you see. But in any case, my feeling is, my view is, Biden will be inaugurated and, you know, whatever, and that will begin the real process of reversal, just like it began in Egypt itself. So we are now up to the rehabilitation, or rather the reversal itself. And I'm going to explain next week what is happening, what exactly is the reversal. And I'm telling you now, what we are seeing has never happened before. Not only that, it defies logic. It defies the rational thinking of people. It seems, because none of this makes sense. None of this. And I'm going to speak about it next week. Right, Any can you questions? Give us a sneak preview of the reverse. What? Reverse of what? It's going to get worse? It's going to get worse. Like what? Yeah. What's an example? <clears throat> well, the, the, the classic example is that there's going to, uh, I believe there's going to be tremendous damage to America. And Biden is already talking about that. He wants to legalize 11 million illegal immigrants. But people say that there's not 11 million. There's 20 million. Okay? That's an enormous number of people who are illegal. Many of them are criminals, you see. And what that is going to do, which is very paradoxical, actually, you know who's going to be affected the most by this? Blacks. Because these illegal immigrants are going to take over the jobs that blacks do, you see. So they're the victims of this attempt, you see, to allow illegal immigrants to go in. But it's not only that. It's not only the immigrants who live now here in America. It is also, somebody told me that there are thousands of Guatemalans that are going through, again, Mexico. They want to come into the U.S. because they're all expecting Biden to allow anybody to come to the America. You see? He's also, going to, I heard, going to take away the restriction of certain Arab countries to come to America. But that's going to invite a terrorist that, that comes to America. You see? I mean, those two things alone is, can harm, really harm America. You see? And then, besides that, you talk about taxes... There are many states that are in debt, terrible debt. Not because of COVID. They were in debt before COVID because they mismanaged. There are many governors, mayors, that are incompetent. Just take a look at New York State. You know, New York State has an incredibly incompetent governor. I'm not even talking about the fact that he's a megalomaniac, right? But a mayor, I mean, it's incredible. And New York owns, or owes, I should say, $15 $15 billion in debt, which is a staggering sum of money. What are they going to do? And, and, they, and they are in debt not because of COVID. That exacerbated everything. They're in debt because they have tremendously mismanaged the budget. What are they going to do? So now that Biden is going to become president, he's going to give them the money, which is going to raise the ceiling of 270, or rather, $27 trillion, substantially. And that is why the dollar is weakening. The dollar is weakening tremendously in Israel. It went down the lowest point in 30 years. 
because the dollar is weakening. Because when you owe $27 trillion, you see, that weakens the stability of the dollar, which is very bad. Why? Because not only will the Americans have to pay up, you see, and anybody living in these democratic states, they're going to be taxed uh, terribly, you see. But the problem is if the dollar weakens substantially, then the world will no longer use it as what's called reserve currency. Most of the money in the world is in dollars because the dollar is the most stable form of currency. And that's only because everybody respects the dollar. But once the United States is now trampling on the value of the dollar, you see, by increasing the debt, which is going to go up, not just 27, it may go up to $40 trillion, which is a sum that we have never heard of before, you see. And what that's going to do is it may influence the world to change the reserve currency to another currency, maybe the Chinese yen. You see? They're saying uh, that we're going back to the gold system. Well that, well, that certainly may be, you know. But how much gold is there really? I mean, how much gold wow. do you think was mined? You know what I'm saying? So it comes out that everybody's going to have dollar bills without gold to back it up. Because how much gold do you think there is in Fort Knox or wherever? And most countries don't have gold. What they have is a dollar which is tied or was tied to gold, no more, right? So that means their currency is worthless. The dollar now in Israel has tremendously weakened, you know? It used to be, uh, the old days, it used to be you can get 360, three shekel and 60 for a dollar, uh, you know, for a dollar. Now I heard it's down to 3.1, which is very bad for the economy of Israel. You see, but in any case, what we see is the weakening of the dollar. So you never know. There may come a point where the world will say, we don't want to have dollars as our reserve. We want to go to the yen, you see, or some other form, you see. But that will be the end of tremendous advantages that America has. And if Biden does that, if he gives out money wholesale, that's exactly what it's going to do, you see. So that's the third thing that Biden wants to do. And there are many things he wants to remove or, in, or he wants to impose or re, uh, reinvigorate the, uh, reinstate, I should say, the regulations that destroy businesses. He wants to bring them back. Then not only that, he wants to stop energy, fracking. And that's going to, again, mean that it's not going to buy oil from the Arab countries or from Iran, you see, besides killing millions of jobs. I mean, there's so much stuff that this guy wants to do, right? He's going to destroy America. And we don't even know where it's going to go. Now, he's not going to do it initially, you know, because he has to proceed slowly. Because the last thing he needs is a revolution, which may be coming up. But that's the last thing he needs. So he's going to do it slowly. But he will do it. Why? Because not only is he an empty suit, which I will talk about, but it's worse because his main pressure is the radical left. AOC, the, uh, the uh, whatever, the squad, whatever they call themselves, and many Democrats that have become radical left. You see Schumer and Pelosi, they are pressuring him to adapt a great deal of money spending, budget, you know, and, and radical left policies. And he has to accede. Why? Because they have what's called blackmail on him. Because Hunter Biden, everybody knows what Hunter Biden did. And everybody knows what Biden did, that he accepted a bribe from, you, from uh, Ukraine. So they have now that to blackmail Biden, you see. This is all going to go on. There are many other things that he's going to do, too numerous to mention. So he will enormously damage the United States. That's what's going to happen. And that itself has many, many different 
purposes that God wants, which I am going to go into next week. Any questions? I have a question. Good. So let's say that if it go, ends up going the route that we were talking about prior, it still fits yes. in with, with your eight, eight with, the, yes, with what you were saying. Yes, it does. Because the reversal, You're right. It, it would still be a reversal, but it's not. It's more also a reversal. For us, it's going to be like a mental, because you know they say the war of Gog and Magog is, uh, is more mental than actual physical. Um, yeah. So our minds, we basically have to reverse everything that we thought was, and it um, and it's all switching to something totally what we didn't think of and can't even imagine or grasp, and and now it's like a whole new, you know, it's it it, it falls in very well. If it is. Oh yeah, um, all it will mean if 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 what you people say, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, if this really happens, will Trump will put his foot down and really? Uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, intercede and all that. Uh, it simply means that the reversal will, ch- will will not happen, or rather, it is happening. We're seeing it, but the reversal will be terminated much earlier. And on the contrary, there will be a shot in the arm. There will be the whole concept of the messianic phase initiation will be rejuvenated, which I really hope will happen. I really hope that everybody's right. Because it will mean that if Trump is back again, he will go after the Rosh of with a vengeance. And he will destroy them. He's going to call out all the forces, everything. He's going to fire a lot of people, put a lot of people in prison. He's going to act, energize the entire Department of Justice, the FBI, CIA, the intelligence community, He's going to go after all of these people, you see. They're saying it's around 80% of the government, Rabbi, that will end up, if it all comes down, that 80% will end up being jailed. Well, treasonous no acts of all different sorts, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, the deep state is very deep, and it's also very extensive, yeah. So that will mean, it, that's, that's, that's what's called v'nahapriku, you see which would be very interesting. So the real question, in other words, your scenario that you're painting is a possibility. But according to the divine plan, what it means is that the reversal will be stopped, will be short-lived. And then what's beautiful about all this is that he, together with Gideon Tsar, can begin the real rehabilitation process. Amazing. That would be very interesting, you see. Uh, So either way, uh, it's very important to understand these eight phases of the Messianic process, you see. So hopefully you're right. Well, they already officially, like on the news, declassified Obamagate, that he was behind the election fraud with um, Italy and China, etc., that's been officially declassified. You can find that on the news. Yeah, which news program? Um, I I don't watch anything besides Newsmax and OAN, but it's, it's out. It's been officially declassified. I think even okay. Fox News posted it. That he declassified Italy, the Obama whole situation. Gave- you mean the whole, whole situation Obama with Italy? Well, it's not just Italy. Um, actually, Radcliffe, I forgot his name, confirmed that China did interfere with um, the, election. the election, and it's been <clears throat> signed, and, and Radcliffe came out and officialized that. So there was foreign interference in the election. That's besides for Obamagate, which has been declassified, but basically all this information that they're getting is from these laptops that they were able to steal at the um at, at, the, at, at capitol the, hill which has been confirmed nancy pelosi even confirmed that her laptop has been stolen yeah well look like i say you know 
uh, your scenario certainly fits. And uh, it's a better scenario because, like I say, the, at least the reversal will be short-lived. And it, not only will the reversal be short-lived, but it will begin the next phase, which is the rehabilitation phase. So and we will be already phase, in phase three? We will be in phase, what, what number was that? The rehabilitation phase is phase that would be four. three. Is phase four. Memtes, Memtes Sharitum is one. The initiation of a messianic process is two. Or then the reversal is three. Right? That's Tachas Benoi. And then rehabilitation is four. Yes. That will happen. So on the contrary, I hope all of you are right. Me too. Because that, if, yeah, well, if that okay. happens... If that happens where Trump retains the presidency, then that truly is the beginning of the messianic era because it's the beginning of the rehabilitation. So they say he won't be, it won't be an initial, like he's not going to be president right away, but they do say that Biden will end up being arrested and... Um, no, but you don't understand. You don't understand. No, 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 no. He has to do it while he's president. Because if he's not president, he has no authority. The military will not listen to him. That makes no well, sense. Well, if he already signed, so I don't know if you heard. No, the, he has to be. That, he has to. He has to be president, or he's not chief. He's not correct because the, they the already chief. he already signed this this insurrection act. The okay, day that Capitol Hill came out. And he came out publicly and told everyone, please go home, everything, stay safe, please go home. Part of the Insurrection Act is he has to come out publicly and tell the people to disperse. Yes, so he has to do that. Verge. Exactly. Ha- if so when if he what told, you're saying is true, he has to do that tomorrow. No, so as he long already as he's did commander that. in chief. What? So they're saying he no. already did that part. He has to announce it to the entire America that he's the right. commander-in-chief. This, you don't tell four people and move on. This right. is a, a, to do this, he has to do it while he's president. He cannot do it when he's not president because then legally he has no authority whatsoever. Biden okay. will be president, you see. Okay. And then Biden will become commander-in-chief. And if he attempts to overthrow Biden, when Biden has been sworn in, then he is guilty of treason. Trump is guilty of treason. Correct. You cannot overthrow a sworn in Unless president. Unless the military is already in in charge, and then no, they won't. Over. No, 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 you, no, no, no. The military will not listen to him because then they will be guilty of treason. You have to go by the law. The law is that whoever is inaugurated, takes the oath of office, is the president. And any attempt to overthrow him is treason. So Trump can only do this when he's president. He cannot do this when he's not president. Nobody's going to listen to him, including the military, because then they would be guilty of treason, because then he is a private citizen. Once he's not president, he's a private citizen. He has no legal authority to order anybody to do anything. Everything that you say, if it's true, must happen tomorrow, not Wednesday, because he's still commander-in-chief tomorrow. If by tomorrow night or Wednesday morning nothing happens, then it is over. Okay. It's as simple as that. To be determined. What was that? To be determined. Exactly. To be determined. Well, fortunately, all we have to do is wait one day, <laughs> not, not four months. I know everybody's sitting, as they say in Yiddish and Spilkes, to see what's going to happen. Uh, my, my wonder is that, and I, again, I think that as far as I'm concerned, um, he will be out and the reversal will proceed much longer than we think. You see, uh, but my but my uh, I wonder is that who in the world has put all of this stuff out on the internet? 
It's incredible. They put him, they put his speeches, people saying things. And if this doesn't happen, then the whole thing is a hoax. Somebody has fooled a lot of people. You see? So I refuse to believe any of this because much of what is going on out there doesn't add up. Makes no sense. You see? see. Listen, it's as simple as that. So tomorrow, as they say, tomorrow is the showdown. If by tomorrow night doesn't happen, it's over with. So, Rabbi, give a barakah that everything would transition the right way. Everything will transition the right way because that's the will of God. We just do not understand what he's going to do. We don't know. Because remember, everything depends on Tachas Benoi. This is the whole problem. The problem is, is that the Tikkun is not complete because God is bringing the Mashiach in terms of the Mem Teshari Tumah, not because of Zakoim, but Kolum Chayovim. So the problem is we don't know how long the reversal has to be. You see? In Egypt, Moshe Rabbeinu was at the Sneh, Tesav of Nisan. And let's say he was there for seven days. So the suffering ended on Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, the suffering of the Gezerah was almost, uh, I don't know, six months. That's a long time, you see. So we don't know how long the reversal will be. And it could really be bad. Really very bad. Because what America is doing, they have no idea of the danger that they are in. And therefore they are triggering a tremendous damage. I don't, I don't believe that the Muslim is going to destroy America, although it's not difficult to do. I just pointed out some of the ways. You know, one of them is where the world could drop the dollar as the reserve currency. And that will severely, uh, the, the, severely damage America economically. Severely. You see, because we won't be the reserve currency. where Everybody has dollars, and it's much easier to trade than dollars. America for, to trade with the world because everything anyway internationally is traded in dollars basically, you see. But if America is not the reserve currency, that's bad news. You see, and imagine if the Chinese yen is currency, it's unbelievable. You see. So we don't really know, but everything depends on reversal. The Tachas Benoi. We do not know how long that will continue. You see, but I'll tell you something, which is a belief that I have, and I'm going to elaborate it on uh, uh, next week. I, I believe that the rehabilitation may start even with the reversal taking place. So that is hopefully good news. You know what I'm saying? That, that you're saying that uh, Mashiach and Yosef will be released from the Klippa even though we're still in the reversal stage? Yes, I think so, yes. Yes, because he's the only one that can really do the reversal. Or not reversal, excuse me. He's who can start the rehabilitation. Because that's a messianic act. So I believe that may start even during the reversal. You see? Yeah, well, Hashem appeared to Moshe, and, and it started already. Even yes, the that's right. Yeah. But remember, the reversal, yeah. And, and, and Moshe Rabbeinu was, you know, he was the candidate to be Mashiach. And he obviously was around while the Gzir of Straw was being administered. So the question is, what was he doing for six months? I'm sure he was trying to rehabilitate or, or lower the sins of the Jews for those six months. So I'm sure as a private person who is a messianic figure, there was something going on. You know what I'm saying? So that would indicate that the rehabilitation will start even during the reversal. 
You see? Because I'm sure that's what he was doing in some way. You see what I'm saying? That's my belief. Rabbi, where do the like, yeah. Chinese fall into? Do, do they fall into the Torah in anywhere? Like, like well, the Chinese Torah? are basically... Well, I'll tell you, the, the Chinese are basically Yefes. You know? I mean, most civilization is Yefes. You know, you have the... Uh, you know, you have the Jews, right? Uh, you have Shem. Then you have Yefes. And you have Chom. Chom is basically Africa. Yefes is Europe, Asia, China, Japan. You know? Uh, and probably South America. Certainly North America. And then you have... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Chom, which I mentioned is Africa. Yeah. So they're, they're probably Yefes. So where do they fall into, like, the messianic process? Because obviously they have a lot of power at the moment. <laughs> well, I don't really believe that they really are involved in the messianic process. No. They're only involved as far as the Klippo is concerned. That they have exhibited enormous evil. That's a very evil country. And what these guys, they, I mean, they, they got 1.4 billion people all in lockstep. It's incredible what these guys are doing, you know. And we thought Russia was bad. China is much worse, you know. But uh, but I, I, they're just part of the Klippa. I don't believe they're part of the Messianic process. So you don't think that they're part of Gog and Magog? No, they're not part of Gog and Magog. I mean, they would they would join in condemning Israel, and now we could see how the condemnation would happen. You see. Because if, if somehow the reversal does end, right, then there will be a condemnation, especially if Trump comes back in four years, you know, which he may. He can come back. He only had one term. We never know. I mean, four years really is an eternity. There's so much stuff that can happen in four years where Biden will do such a terrible job to America, right, that everybody will vote for Trump to somehow bring America back, as he says, make America great. You know? So that would be very interesting. <clears throat> Biden can do that. You know, if they really tamper with the American system, the economy and everything, regulations and everything, then everybody's going to be desperate to get Trump back, you know. Look, uh, everything is open. It's, uh, it, it, we, we, it's very hard to imagine the, 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 the scenario of what could happen with a guy like Biden. And the truth is, we don't even know how long Biden would last. last. Like Trump said to Biden, they may invoke the 25th Amendment against you, which they will do. Yeah. In other words, if he, deteri if he deteriorates mentally, which he is definitely deteriorating already. But if he comes really very bad, they're going to get rid of him. And the one who will be back in his place will be Harris. Now, Harris is ten times worse than he is in terms of her commitment to the left and communism and socialism. Much worse, you see. So you never know. Uh, where America will have suffered so great that they'll all be beg Trump to run again. You see, so we don't know. But remember, everything is determined by how long does Tachas Benoi have to happen to bring the Tikkun up to speed. That's what it's all about. But like I say, hopefully the good news is that the rehabilitation will happen even during the reversal. You see, that God will not completely abandon the Jewish people, you know, to the, to the uh, difficulties of the reversal process. I feel that to be true. So at least that's a, a partial good news. You see? Okay. So we have one day to wait, and that will resolve exactly what's happening. Thank you, Rabbi. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, great. Next week, I will continue uh, in terms of the 
go much more into detail about the reversal process itself.